Okay, let's do the entire assembly over here. The word Michelin down here will take the longest time, so I'm going to go do the Dodge, the Ram, and the Michelin. Let's go click the V key and go over here and get first the uh, Indicia or the logo, the shield, whatever you want to call it. And since I know scale, strokes, and effects is selected, I'm going to just um, go to the E key and shrink it, okay, just by grabbing the corner icon, not holding any key down. Now let's uh, put it up to the highest thing. Now remember, if I turn this and the bounding box stays horizontal and vertical, I'm going to have to reset it. So, I'm sorry, let's go grab it again. Hit the E key and turn it and see if the bounding box stays horizontal and vertical. Yes, it did. So I have to go Command Z, Object Transform Reset Bounding Box, and now, of course, it won't. It will move with it. It won't stay horizontal and vertical. So let me um, match up the right-hand side since it's the easiest thing that I've been doing so far and thin it down, scale it down to match up pretty much the right hand side. Now let's grab this middle icon, hold the command key and fold it into position. Let's grab the bottom thing and move it down here and you can see how well I've got that in position right there. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew that was coming. I'm not going to start over either. God bless me. Okay, let's lock this one up. <laughs> Can't believe I did that. Let's hit the V key and go grab this word Dodge. Um, and I'm only going to need the D, G, and the E. So let's move it over. Let's shrink it down. Uh, move it up with the E key transform tool. And let's thin it down real small and put it over where it's supposed to go, right over here. Then I'm going to take the direct select tool or, or, or just throw away inside the group the D and the O. Okay, so I already know that this one is the O. Let me just yank it down here to the trash can. And now let me take the D and yank it down here to the trash can. And you can see now how I have um, eliminated those from being there. Let's uh, thin it down, turn it put it back up in position. This one is not going to match as well as the other ones do and I don't really care as long as the um, attitude of the lettering is good. Okay, It doesn't have to match pretty. Uh, please, don't even try. Alright? That's not the point. So let's go over here and just match it up like this. A little bit more on the scale. That's all I'm doing is scaling it right now. And um, I'm going to uh, uh, grab the corner right here, hold the command key and move the E into position a little bit better, move it out a little bit and since this doesn't match up here I'm okay with that, alright? Let me go in and lock up the E, go click and click the lock button over here and just move the uh, G into position. This is a different G altogether. See how well you can do to force yourself into coming close but don't have to come perfect, okay? That's not the point. So let's go like this now. Uh, let's say they updated their logo and they now have a little bit of a different font inside the logo. Um, let's now lock up the G and let me thin because this is bending around the uh, front fender. Let's uh, click, hold the command key on the top corner and move this into position. Let's kind of move it like this and I'm fine with that as long as the attitude is correct, which of course it is. Now. I'm going to draw this letter shape out very fast. Let's go in and um, uh, convert it back to from outline or wireframe to artwork. So I hold my finger on the command key. Okay. Now I'm going to go get the P key and I'm going to draw out this shape. Now you would never draw an imperfection, is that correct? I'm going to um, draw this to the best of my ability. So just watch how I'm drawing and I'm going to of course take away the fill for the moment, just for the moment. And I'm going to um, put a stroke on there of the same red, uh, but very small. Let me bring the stroke palette over here and show you just for the time being, let's put a 0.1 stroke on it. Just a real thin, 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 thin stroke. Let's go over here now and go right over here and pull. I'll edit it in a few seconds. Let's go down like this. Let's go around. I purposely left a bump right there so that you would have to fix it. A lot of the times when you get a, a job from a client, 
Um, I had to toggle. What I just did there was I toggled the A key and the P key because my command key, when I held it down, wasn't the correct select tool. Okay, now let's finish the shape and then go down here and close the shape. And you can see how well I have pretty much done this so far. Let me click and move this up. Okay, I've now made a pretty decent shape as it bends around that, le that uh, front fender. Now, I could use the exact same shape and go Command C and Command V, which I think I do. So I'll grab it like this, hold Command Option and select it, or go over here and select it. Command C and Command F. I meant Command F, I'm sorry. Hit the E key and just shrink it for the little one in the middle. So this one will be fine. Let's just put it in the best position we can. Have it kind of round off nicely here. Have it round off nicely here. Um, this side, because it's bending more, should be wider than that side. Okay, now, all we've got to do is go fill to both of them on um, no stroke and a fill of red on this one. Click the outer one like this with the direct select tool. Okay, with the direct select tool, click the outer one and no stroke and a fill of red on that one. Now go over here to the palette and make sure the layer palette and make sure that the little one is indeed, look at over here, the little one is on top of the big one. Okay, no big deal. Select both circles and hit command eight. Now that's the same as going to object, compound path and make. I now have my D and my O bending around that just like it's doing right there. And that's how I want that done right there. Remember, I don't care how off this is, um, it's all right. I don't want you grabbing individual points and fine tuning, okay? It's not the kind of the point of it. It's the attitude is the point. Attitude by what I mean is the perspective, the look of the lettering. So let me go grab and do uh, the word Michelin on the bottom real fast. Let me grab this Michelin over here with the V key, bring it over to this one. Um, of course, it's in, can't see through it because it's not in wire frame. So uh, we'll just watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to lock up the previous group so I can't touch it. I'm going to command click the eyeball for the visibility to go back like this. Then all I have to do is hit the E key and scale it down just normally. And the same thing is going to occur here that we did on the other side. Let's just start with the N and work our way to all the other letters and let them flow. So I'm going to open up the layer palette in a minute after I actually get this thing to have the correct attitude of just the N. Every single time I do this, I'm going to have to um, concentrate on the letter N or the, le the, the previous letter that you're working with. Let me scale it out a little tiny bit. Better back off one magnification so I can scale it out some more. Okay, and now turn it a little bit more and move it up. Uh, turn it a little bit more and move it up. Okay, now let's move it down here. Okay, now all I have to do is skew this and the end will fall into position. By the way, it'll skew all the other letters and make it easier on me. What should I do when I want to lock up the letter N? Should either marquee it with the direct select tool and hit command 2 or open up the group thing and you can see all the letters inside of here which is so much easier to click the lock button right there but before I do that let me command click right there in the middle and skew the N to kind of fall into position just like this let me grab the bottom corner hold the command key and now I've got it I've got to actually scale it out just a pinch way over here to the left Okay, just a tiny bit more and I am pretty close. Now, I'm going to um, lock up the N. So I believe this is the N, I lock it up and now I just move the I into position, okay? I'm gonna turn the I just a little bit and put it back up in position and you can see now how well I've got the letter I right there in position. Let's lock up the letter I. Now, I obviously have to turn the entire assembly and do the letter L. Okay, let's see if I can keep this going. Let's lock up the letter L and put the E in position. Well, it seems to be falling in what I want to do. Let me turn it a little bit more and put it back up there so I can stay in the transform tool and I really don't even have to get out of the transform tool to do this, meaning, um, I, I didn't mean that, I don't have to um, 
retransform the letters as I'm moving along, is what I wanted to say. Let me lock up the E, and then I'll have to turn the H. Look at how much easier this is if you use the layer palette to lock things up. Uh, back a little bit more and down. Okay, I'm going to thin it down because it needs to be thinned down, of course. There's the letter H. I lock it up. Let's just put the C into position. Okay, it's working beautifully. Let's lock up the C and put the I into position. Let's lock up the I and put the M into position. Okay, that's the end of this one. The last thing we're going to do, which is kind of like the hardest one on the file, that's why I saved it for last, is this one right here. So stay tuned. Let me uh, lock this up. Click have everyone locked up inside of here, hit Command S to save the file, and we go on with the last one, which I call the iBox Spring Lettering.